this is my little Kennedy hex cut power hacksaw. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a few years <clears throat> and you're a subscriber, you'll have seen this before. I did a, I did a video on this, and I absolutely love this bit of kit. I also did a video on the uh, <clears throat> modification to the jaws on the vice that I made, and um, this is a workhorse in my little workshop. Um, I mainly do small stuff, so I'm working on small bar stock, and this thing is absolutely brilliant. Unlike Kev over on Mr. Factotum's workshop, I actually do not like and enjoy hacksawing. He, Kev seems to really like it, but I do not, and I will do anything I can to avoid having to do it. And this little thing, absolutely bloody brilliant. Superb. So why is it out on the bench and not under the bench, which is where it normally lives? Well, basically, it, I needed to change the, the hacksaw blade, and, uh, and uh, I wanted to give it a service and oil it up and all the rest of it, and I'm glad I did because, well, I discovered something. Yeah, the drive belt's in a bit of a bad way. <laughs> I've never changed it. I don't know how old it is, but as you can see, <clears throat> it's obviously a laminate construction and it's delaminating and it's uh, basically just falling apart. Well, fortunately, you can still get these flat drive belts. This is a 540mm by 25mm belt. And I, I got mine here in the UK from a great firm that I've used before called Bearing Boys. Uh, not sponsored or anything, but they're, 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 they're great. I bought bearings off of them and other things in the past. And it's Wednesday today. I ordered that on Monday. It came Tuesday. So, you know, and this is Christmas. So, <laughs> you know, you know, don't expect that. So, right. So anyway, the new belt's on the rest of it. But here's the problem. The Kennedy doesn't have any actual proper method of tensioning the drive belt basically the entire saw this part is held on by two bolts that one and there's one on the other side <clears throat> and they're in slotted holes and this moves backwards and forward and that's how you tension the drive belt but there's nothing to actually other than pulling it back yourself or levering it back somehow there is no way to to, to act, sort of accurately tension the belt so i intend to um change that add add a add a an, an adjuster to it so that I can actually easily tension the drive belt. So how am I going to do that? Well, my plan is to bolt a piece of square bar stock, such as this, on the base, somewhere around there, like that. I will cross drill it and tap it probably six mil and put a bolt through the center. That will bolt will then press up against, let me get my pointy stick, here. And this will be bolted to the base, the bolt will press against here and I can undo or do up that bolt and that will apply tension. That will push this this way. These, these bolts that hold this down are in, are in slotted holes. And that will allow me to accurately adjust the tension on the drive belt. Um, I'll take the, the, the thing apart and it, it'll be more evident once I've done that. So I have undone both the bolts that fix the actual saw part to the base. And what that should allow me to do is lift that whole piece off and away. Hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. <coughs> there we go. So that is the entire saw part completely separate. And that just leaves a base. And as I said, I need to build a couple of holes to mount a piece of bar here which will have a bolt going through it which will allow me to push that this way yeah you can i think you can probably see the let me bring you in closer you can see the slotted holes in the base yeah so these are the slotted holes here that allow the axle saw part to move back and forward to tension the bolt um, but i'll tip this up because this is this casting is webbed underneath so you can't just drill holes anywhere you've got to be a bit precise about where you make the holes in the base yeah so as you can see the casting is webbed as i said so i'll need to make the holes probably somewhere along here to mount the block uh, that's fine there's there's a nice gap that gap there so um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem so it also gives me a chance to clean up the base, which I haven't really had a chance to do now that the actual saw's off of it. Right, let's get on with it. Well, I've got the uh, motor off as well. It just makes it easier to work on the, the base so you can see the actual cast base of the Kennedy on its own. And uh, it's, it's got webbing built into it underneath. So yeah, so the holes are drilled in the, uh, in the base here. Um, you probably see there are three holes whereas i only really needed two not really a mistake originally it was going to be those two but i decided that that one in the middle there was too close to where the hole 
the cross hole for the adjuster is going to be. So I moved it out to there. So uh, yeah, so that's that. That's the base done. And after much um, drilling and tapping, that's the adjuster. And that's going to bolt on there like that. And that Allen screw will allow me to push that part of the uh, saw away from the pulley and basically tighten it. Now, as it stands at the moment, that will be pressing against the aluminium casting. So what I'll do is I'll probably put a thin bit of steel plate uh, where this screw head, uh, head, the end of the screw bears down on that just to give it something decent to press against. So um, yeah, let me get that bolted on and uh, put it all back together. Okay, all back together. I haven't tightened it down yet, but I think you can see that this screw will push this that way, which will allow me to tension the belt. Now you could do, as I said, you could do it before, but you needed some kind of lever in there, and then you needed to be able to hold it under tension and tighten the bolts. Whereas with this adjuster now, I can tighten it, I can get it to the tension I want on the belt, tighten it up, you know, and it's it's just a hell of a lot easier to to do the whole thing. So if I come out from that, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. I'll turn the saw around. That might um, help to illustrate the thing a little bit better. So yeah, so there's the, there's the, the belt, as you can see. The pulley is obviously attached to the saw part and that whole thing moves that way and the motor is fixed independently. So that will put tension on the belt. And at the moment it's a bit, it's a bit floppy. It needs a little bit more than that. But to, I'll bring you down a little bit lower so you can see the, the tensioner from this side. Yeah. There's the tensioner as you can see in there. And that will, uh, allow me, as I said, to adjust the belt tension without having to struggle trying to hold it in under tension and do the nuts up um, on the uh, on the movable part. Well, it's all back together. Um, and um, the belt tension's on there. Does it work? Well, yes, it does. This, this bit, the bit I put on, that works absolutely superbly. Is it an unqualified success? No, it is not. But it's nothing to do with the tensioner. The tensioner does its job. The problem is that the holes in the base that these bolts go through that support and clamp the saw down to the base have obviously worn over the years. And there's quite a lot of slop in those holes. So the problem is when you loosen these off, not only is this free to slide back and forth, but it can canter and, uh, around um, because of the slop which wouldn't matter normally, but of course that immediately alters the alignment of the pulley on the saw with the, with the drive pulley that's on the motor. So I spent the last hour attempting to get the belt to track straight again, <laughs> which I did finally manage to do, um, um, but you still have to basically clamp the, the base down when you're doing this, get your tension on the belt using this, and then canter this over to get this this will move even when there's tension on the belt this will still move from side to side in an arc so you need to have that you need to adjust that and get that just right before you nip these bolts up so yes it's a bit of a fiddle unfortunately but uh, well it's all back together and it's working again so we'll uh, we'll give it a go I've got a bit of steel bar in there it's about a quarter of an inch I suppose oh and yes, I know I'm running it with the belt guard off. I'm going to die. Oh no! The uh, automatic off needs adjusting. It's, uh, that's all moved, of course, because I've had the whole lot off. Um, but yeah, it works. So it should switch off, but it's not going to because I need to adjust that. But yes, it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, so we've achieved uh, what we set out to do. It's got a new belt, it's been all cleaned up. Uh, it's got a new saw blade. Uh, everything's been oiled. And now it's got a decent adjuster for the tension. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, it was a pain to do it all, but this is such a useful tool and I don't mind doing the work on it. Uh, and even the fact that you've still got to fiddle around to get the 
the belt tracking right on it. Um, doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's worth the time spent on it because it is such a useful tool. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, do a quick video on this. Um, if anyone has got one of these and they're having trouble adjusting the belt tension, then that's quite a good way to go. As always, thanks for watching. Cheers.